Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. This is our second take of Throwback Thursday. We just had a major catastrophe live. I was opening a box of 1972 OPG, and if you checked it out, if you watched the video, it's bad. It's real bad. Let's talk about this before I get into the 2008 boxes. Look, this is just the third pack that I opened. Look how every single card was absolutely destroyed by the gum. Um, literally destroyed every single card completely, I don't know, baffling, unacceptable. So let's take a look at the box one more time. This is, um, I feel like I, I, Steve does a great job, but is there a way that you, can you just see the gum? It looks wet in there almost. Um, this is the second time this has happened to me. The first time was with 81 Don Russ. The box was totally destroyed. That was a baseball card exchange authenticated box. These packs almost look like they were submerged in water for a period of time the gum just bled through the cards an awful condition box just want to let everybody know that i have filed a, a claim on ebay because these cards were not as uh described and like i said it's it was five thousand three hundred dollars there so i'm um, hoping that we can get that back and then refund everybody in that break because it's completely unacceptable so that's what happened. If you were tuning in tonight thinking, oh, I can't wait to watch a box of 48-year-old baseball cards be ripped up, and that's going to be pretty awesome, I apologize. There's no one more disappointed than me and probably also the folks that bought into the break. But I'm on it. We'll make it right. We'll get your money back. Uh, if we can't get your money back, then I will do something to uh, get your money back and make it right with you. So here we go. We're going to get started with 2008 Tops. These are blaster boxes. I had them on my shelf of things that maybe I would rip at one point or another. So we're going to rip these open right now. The 2008 Tops set, we've never opened on the channel. We've never opened any 2008 Tops, but there are 660 total cards in the set. Series 2 has 330 cards. There's some nice Hall of Famers in here. Arguably the best rookie card is going to be Joey Votto, and he's in Series 1, so we're not going to see him today. But there's some nice guys in the second series, guys like Derek Jeter, Ken Griffey Jr., Greg Maddox. And a really cool thing about these is that there's one game-used memorabilia card inside each of these boxes. So we'll be seeing some game-used relics of possibly some Hall of Famers like Pedro Martinez, Yvonne Rodriguez, or former MVPs like Jimmy Rollins. Here's the side of the box. Uh, they have, it looks like they have an autograph group there. It'd be nice to find maybe, there's some nice names on there. Just looking over, Carlos, Del, Carlos Delgado and Vladdy Sr., David Wright, David Ortiz. We'll see if we can find any of those. This was actually on the clearance bin at one point. Somebody bought this for 40% off. It, it was $9.99 back in 2008, and now they bought it for $5.99. Uh, I paid $20 a piece for these. So let's go ahead and rip these open and see what we can find. The sponsor for this video is myself because I wanted to get something done for you guys quickly so you weren't waiting around if you were in that live stream. So let's see what I can find. Hopefully we have some nice relics in here. Maybe even we'll hit an autograph. So a 2008 blaster box looked like this on the inside. And no gum in these packs so we don't have to worry about the cards being destroyed. And look at that, the relic, they don't waste any time. They put it right on top. It is a former Home Run Derby champion, Bobby Abreu, authentic game-worn jersey relic right there. Still in the pack. That's pretty awesome. I don't, even, I don't think I'm going to open this pack up. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I'll figure something out. So we got that one done. They have the uh, nice like lime green packs. I'll rip two holes on the front of these packs. Albert Pujols was the man back in the day. There's eight cards uh, total in here. And how many? Is there 10 packs? Yeah, there's 10 packs. So 80 total cards back in 2008 for 10 bucks plus a relic. You cannot beat that. Um, nowadays, a product like this, we don't even see a product as good as this anymore in terms of them being so generous with the relics. I mean, yeah, they give you a, uh, a manufactured relic in your blasters, but it's just not the same as having a piece of game used memorabilia. So here we go, 2008 Tops. You see Vernon Wells is the first card there. I kind of like this design. I like how they have the team name across the top in those little bubbles. Kind of an interesting design. Uh, Edwin Jackson. There's Nate McLeod, former Buck. Oh, I used to really like him when I was uh, going to the games all the time back in around this time. Actually, my first year as a season ticket holder was in 2007. So there is a Prince Fielder making a catch there at first base. First pack is in the books. Next pack up. Let's see what we've got in here. We've got 
Bruce Bochy, who might be a Hall of Famer someday. I mean, three World Series championships. I think you might see him get in someday. And speaking of Hall of Famers, we have one right here. It is Pedro Martinez of the Mets. Great card right there. We've got Chris Young. And we have an insert here, a nice Justin Morneau and a campaign 2012 card, Woodrow Wilson and Theodore Roosevelt. Um, that's kind of interesting. You can see it was an absolute smackdown there, 435 to 88 back in 1912. Justin Morneau and Ty Wigginton. So this is an insert card of some kind, TS3. Uh, Top Stars insert. That's a cool looking card right there, Justin Morneau. Former MVP, right? From the Twins. He had some nice seasons for sure. And speaking of Twins, we have another top-notch twin from this era coming up. And Michael Kadire, who's going to be up for the Hall of Fame. And this guy's up for the Hall of Fame. I think Kurt Schilling's going to get in. Had some nice stats throughout his career. Lots of strikeouts. But he was uh, he took it to another level in the postseason. That's where Schilling really set him part, himself apart from everybody else. And speaking of Hall of Famers, we have his former teammate there, Randy Johnson. These two guys were both on the 2001 World Series champion Diamondbacks. Pretty cool. They were number one and number two of the rotation. And Randy, 6'10", Randy Johnson at the plate right there. That's an interesting picture. Don't see him batting too often. There's Hideki Matsui. We've got a Johnny Cueto rookie card without the dreadlocks there. Nice rookie card. Johnny Cueto, you can see. Back then, Cueto just kind of wrote his name in all capital letters. I'm sure he's probably perfected the autograph. By now, after literally signing probably tens of thousands of autos over his nice long career. David Wright telling students to work hard. And there we've got a Topps All-Rookie Vote team. I guess back then they let you vote on who got the Gold Cup, which is kind of cool. Tom Gorzolani, another one of my favorite Buccos. The Pirates weren't that good back in 2007, 2008 for sure. But they sure had some likable players on their team. Tom Gorzolani was one of them. Really liked him a lot. Uh, he actually was a huge Dave Matthews Band fan. And we have Michael Kadiah right there as well. He's up for the Hall of Fame. He's not going to get in, but had a nice career for sure. All right, here's our next pack. Next pack of 10 from this box. We're doing both boxes today. We've got Garrett Olsen as our first card. There's Troy Gloss, another guy who was a star during this era. And Ryan Braun, Gold Cup card, kind of fitting. Ryan Braun, I don't know if we're going to see him anymore. His contract is up in... Milwaukee, so we'll see if he just decides to hang it up and just finish out, you know, his entire MLB batting record with just the one team, which you don't see too often, or maybe he'll catch on with another team. He's uh, still hated in some cities, especially the rival cities in the NL Central. All the Cubs fans absolutely despise this guy. Of course, Ryan Braun failed a, a um, PED test in 2011 and basically stole the MVP award from Matt Kemp. Uh, came out right after Braun won the MVP that he had been using there's carlos lee el caballo he had a lot of power back in the day greg dobbs we've got an insert here again of kurt schilling you'll be hearing a lot of hall of fame talk across lots of different baseball media platforms over the next uh probably two months because there's not much going on in baseball right now you know there's no games or anything so every uh december into early january we talk about the Hall of Fame, so we'll be talking about that a little bit here and there. There's Josh Hamilton. What could have he been if he would have just stayed clean? And, man, he uh, had some really great seasons, that's for sure. Rocco Baldelli, nice one right there. Brad Hopp, we got a rookie card of Wesley Wright, former lefty there for the Astros. Adam Kennedy gets a nice 50th anniversary Gold Cup card. Like the look of that card a lot. And Kennedy had some nice seasons. Juan Encarnacion actually had to retire. A freak accident with poor Juan Encarnacion. Just, you know, waiting for his turn to go to bat. Just standing there in the on-deck circle. And boom, takes a foul ball off his eye. Fractures his, like, orbital bone. And it ended his career. Khalil Green had a nice few years. And there's my guy, Frankie Liriano. Like this guy a lot. He was with the Buccos for a while. And we actually share the same birthday. So... Kind of a connection to him there. And he was always super nice and friendly to all the fans at PNC Park. So that definitely stands out. Next pack, we've got Kenny Rogers. Looking pretty old there, almost with some gray hair. Casey Kochman. We've got Kaz Fukumori rookie card. I don't remember him too much. You can see there's the old style rookie card logos there before they redid those a couple years later. We've got a nice gold card here with a Hall of Famer and a future Hall of Famer. you got Miggy and Yvonne Rodriguez down there in Lakeland, Florida, home of the Tigers in spring training. Nice card for sure. It's numbered out of 2008. 
You're a big winner. You get 10% off fat heads with this card. I'm sure that's long since expired. I really hope that these don't count as part of the 10 cards. I'll have to go back and watch the video and see if that counts. Or part of the 8 cards. That would really be crappy. If I'm just putting all these promotional items in here, here and there. So let's see if the, that that David Wright card counts. we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's George W. Bush and Bill Clinton. Campaign 92. Six, all right, so it doesn't count, apparently. Yep, they actually made some cards. Not baseball cards, but campaign cards for the 92 campaign. Featuring Clinton, George Bush, and Ross Perot. I saw those at the uh, Triple Play Vintage Wax Out in Ohio. I almost bought them, but I just left them there. I think they're like $5 for the box or something like that. I don't think there's any value to them, but it's, I guess, kind of cool to kind of relive the 92 campaign, I guess. If maybe for some of you that was your first ever time voting. I wasn't able to vote until the year 2000. There's Dusty Baker, manager of the Houston Astros now. I like Dusty a lot. We've got a classic combos card. Albert Pujols and Prince Fielder. That's a pretty interesting looking card right there. I wonder what happened there. Maybe Pujols got picked off. I, maybe he was in a rundown. I'm not sure. Nice card. And this is a nice looking card right here. We got Mickey Mantle 1956 Tops design card. Take a look at the picture they chose. The image from his rookie card. Uh, that is an awesome card. That is going to be put aside. I love that card. I would love to get the 52 Mantle at some point. Um really kind of mad that I wasted half of what it would cost to get the 52 Mickey Mantle on that crap box of 72 OPG, which now it's, man, it's going to be, that's a huge, huge, huge hit. I really hope that I get refunded that money. Next up, we have Bobby Abreu just pulled his relic earlier. Evan Meek was another great guy for the Buccos. Evan Meek, where are you, buddy? I used to talk to him every day in batting practice. He lives out in the Seattle area. He actually said, hey, we should hit up a Dave Matthews Band show sometimes. He's another another guy that loved the Dave Matthews Band. Got to talking because I guess he saw my shirt the one day. But anyway, there's A.J. Burnett, another former bucko. He had a nice career. There he is with the Blue Jays. Jojo Reyes. We've got John Smoltz. He's a Hall of Famer. I love his autograph, by the way. He's got a very clean auto. Rich Hill, still around. There he is, about ready to snap off a nasty curveball. Andy Marte. Craig Wilson got a Gold Cup card for the Buccos, 2001. Tops All-Star rookie first baseman. That's interesting. Um, I wonder if they did, like, with the best. Did they do the best rookie for each year? I don't think Craig Wilson was the best rookie in any year, that's for sure. I mean, he had some good season. I think he had one season where he had 36 home runs or something like that. All right, so we'll move on to the second box right now. There's 10 more packs coming your way from this blaster box. I'm not sure what these go for on eBay. I haven't looked, but when I saw these old blasters, I picked these up at the um, Chantilly show down in Virginia a few weeks back, and I was planning on opening them at some point. I didn't know when I was going to open them, but then we had the uh, opportunity right here. All right, so let's see what we can find. The Relic is going to be on the top, I guess. There it is. So I'm actually going to save that relic for last. Let's put that upside down. Some packs are in the middle. Some packs are in that top flap. By the way, you can reuse these blasters. I want to reuse this one, but I found it um, pretty convenient to reuse empty blaster boxes to uh, to ship like big lots of cards. And like if you have like 400 cards, you have to send team bag them up, put them in one of those. Put them within some packing peanuts in a primary mail box and you save yourself like 50 cents to a buck on a, a BCW box. One of those cardboard white boxes, which uh, really adds up after a while. Buying those and shipping them off. We've got Joe Torrey there. He's a Hall of Famer. There's Carlos Pena. Luis Gonzalez, another one of those 2001 Diamondbacks. They're all coming around in this video. Brian Barton, rookie card. We've got Cliff Floyd. Looks like he probably just struck out and is all mad at himself. Andrew Miller. I believe that might be a second-year card back with the Marlins. He's kind of faded away. Um, not as important as a of a character. I mean, he's still okay, but he's not the same guy he was back in 2000 and, what was it, like 15, 16, 17 with the Indians where he was just striking out 14, 15 guys in an inning. This is what the back of the cards look like, by the way. I don't know if I showed you them too much. There's Brad Lidge. 
Brad Lynch, former closer for the Phillies, does a really nice job on MLB Network Radio now. There's Yadier Molina. That's a nice card right there. His rookie card's 2004. Yadier Molina will be a Hall of Famer. We've got another campaign card. Same exact one as before, Woodrow Wilson. There's Lidge and Craig Monroe. Lidge had that filthy slider when he was closing with the Astros and the Phillies. There's Tom Glavin, another Hall of Famer. Jack Wilson. We've got Wesley Wright. There's Jorge De La Rosa, Marlon Bird, and Chase Utley is the last one there. Next pack up. We've got Brian Giles, and I think I saw a 56-style card coming our way here in a second. And look at that. It's another Mickey Mantle. Pretty cool. I, I don't know what this goes for. I do have the Beckett handy. I, I know the Beckett is a really terrible resource for looking up the price of cards because they're out of touch. In fact, did you know the most valuable card in 2008 Tops is a Steve Pierce rookie card, according to Beckett, even more so than a Joey Votto? Go figure that one out. There's uh, there's instances like that all across these older sets where they just I feel like they never updated the prices. So a Mickey Mantle set, these cards are worth, um, it says 2008 factory set Mantle Blue. That's not what we're looking for. Um, I don't know. I don't see it here. I would assume it's worth a few dollars but i can't find it i think it's a really cool card though and i'm gonna keep it got two of them now that's pretty awesome uh, looking at the back of the card it says mm62 so i don't know if they made multiple cards like that there's you're a big winner card again i guess you get one of those in every box jose castillo nice one right there i believe he actually passed away tragically in a car accident former bucko right there it was like a year or two ago. There's Jabba Chamberlain. Remember, everybody was all about Jabba Chamberlain. It's like, we got to protect his arm and his pitch count. And he just never really became the super standout that I guess people thought he was going to be. I mean, he was all right. There's Johnny Cueto, a rookie card for the second time. We've got a Nick Johnson, all rookie team from 2002. For some reason, I never liked Nick Johnson that much. Clay Meredith with the side winding action. Here's our next pack. Matt Morris, Josh Beckett. We've got an Austin Kearns, and there's this Chris Young Gold Cup card. Hideki Matsui, Godzilla there, Jason Giambi with the Yankees playing some first base. Of course, near the end of his career, played a lot of DH. Homer Bailey, I was actually at the game where Homer Bailey threw a no-hitter on September 30th. What year was it now? Uh, September 30th, 2012, maybe? I don't know. At PNC Park? I'm pretty sure it was 9.30, though. I remember getting some ticket stubs for that game, walking around after the game, picking up ticket stubs. I could sell those for like 10 bucks a piece, make some money back because season tickets are very expensive. So there's a Pedro Martinez again. Nice one right there. Unieski Betancourt. We've got Mike Sosha with the Angels and Mike Redmond of the Twins. We've got about three packs left, and then we have the Relic. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Throwback Thursday, everybody. Again, my deepest apologies for the debacle that was 1972 Tops. I don't know if I'll, I'm ever going to want to buy a box that old and that expensive. That was the most, I think that was the most expensive box I ever purchased. And um, wow, what a, I just absolutely got burned on that one. There's a Luis Castillo. We've got another Tops Town card there, Manny Ramirez. Alex Gordon, who just recently hung it up, so he's now retired. There he is playing some third base. Of course, he would eventually transition to be a gold glove left fielder there with the Royals. Great player. Not a Hall of Famer. You won't see him in the Hall of Fame, but had a great career. Luis Castillo with the Mets. There's Tulo, his gold cup card, his rookie card's 07. He was a guy that just got hurt all the time. It seemed like Tula had all this potential. We always thought he was going to hit like 40 home runs a year, but it seemed like he maybe only had like one season where he was completely healthy, and then every other year he was always dinged up. There's that Cabrera and Rodriguez card again. we got Wandy Rodriguez gold card there. Former Bucko again. There's Hideki Okajima, 2007 all-rookie pitcher card. And we've got Travis Hafner and Mike Sweeney. So here's our last pack. We'll use the Okajima to kind of shield who our hit is going to be and then we'll take a look at those we've got k-rod frankie rodriguez there's carlos beltran i don't know if he's going to get in the hall of fame i feel like before the whole astros cheating incident he probably had a really good shot at getting into the hall of fame now 
I don't know. It's um, it's looking pretty iffy. There's Nick Punto, Joe Borowski, Maglio Ordonez, Dave Roberts back with the Giants. Of course, now he's the manager of the Dodgers. Pat Neshek, who loves signing cards for you guys through the mail. Crazy motion right there. And the last card is Miguel Batista. And let's check out who we've got for our game use relic. It is going to be a Kerry Wood with a piece of the um, pinstripe in there. Very nice Chicago Cubs relic right there, Kerry Wood. So we didn't get a Hall of Famer like we were hoping to, like a Pedro Martinez or Yvonne Rodriguez that were featured on the box. But some nice relics, some solid players right there, and some nice cards. I hope you guys liked this episode of Throwback Thursday. Please hit the uh, thumbs up button for me. I'd very much appreciate it. And if you're new around here, would love to have you on as a subscriber. And for everybody involved in that Patreon break of 1972 tops, I will keep you updated at all steps of the way. I have the um, the complaint in there right now. And if I do not get a refund by November 25th, I'm going to ask eBay to step in. And I will keep you up to date with that on Patreon. So thank you very much for your support, everybody. Tomorrow we'll have a... Face off Friday for you. A Saturday showdown coming up with some top UK boxes on Saturday. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. And I will see you all tomorrow. Good night, everybody.